Okay, in the previous video, we talked about something called uh, the sex-linked inheritance. But in this video, I need to explain a very important concept. Some genes are inherited through autosomes and some genes are inherited through sex chromosomes. If you remember, I told you that autosomes are just the chromosomes which are not the sex chromosomes. All right. Uh, in this diagram, it's the 44 chromosomes which have highlighted or the 22 pairs. And sex chromosomes are just the are just either the XX or XY chromosomes. And there are also genes located there. So if the genes are located on the autosomes, we will call it autosomal inheritance. And if the genes are located on the sex chromosomes, we will call them sex linked inheritance or sex linkage. I just want you to see the list of the questions that I've put here. These are from the past papers in paper 4, Cambridge A-level Biology. So for these questions, when you look at number 1, uh, OCA or oculocutaneous albinism. Albinism is a type of albinism. Don't worry about this. There are many different types of OCA. The point I'm just saying here is OCA1 is one form of OCA. And it is caused by a recessive mutation in the autosomal gene. What that means, the part that I've highlighted there, it just means that this gene is located on the autosome. It's not located on the sex chromosome. Another one over here I just want you to see is uh, number two. The recessive mutations in a gene known as pink one located on chromosome one, which is an autosome. That is your clue that tells you that this gene is also located on the autosome. So the questions will usually give you the clues. All right. Uh, in number three here, in the gene in the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, the two different genes control body color and eye color. That means there are two. This is dihybrid inheritance. Don't worry about it. What they're just saying is there are two genes. One gene control body color and one gene control eye color. I have highlighted it and I have highlighted it at the bottom. Each gene is autosomal, which means to say the gene is located on the autosome. That's it. But when you see number four and number five, an inherited form of diabetes insipidus, don't worry about that. It may be caused by faulty membrane receptors, don't care. These receptors are coded for by a sex linked allele so the gene or the allele remember we use those two terms interchangeably gene or allele but it doesn't matter the gene is located on a sex chromosome they didn't specify whether it's x or y chromosomes but in most cases it's x chromosomes anyway all right and the last one in oletip letipus i don't know how to pronounce that um, the females have two X chromosomes and the males have an X and a Y chromosome. It was deduced that in this organism, the gene that controls body color is located on the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. So this is your clue that it is sex-linked inheritance as well, X and Y chromosomes. But the gene that controls whether the black spots are present, it's a different gene, yeah? Genes for black spots, they are located on the autosome. So here's where it's a combination. There is one gene that is located on the X and Y chromosome, so that's sex linkage, but there's another gene for the black spots which are located on the autosomes. The point I'm just trying to make here is the questions will usually tell you, these are your clues to tell you whether the genes are on the sex chromosomes or the autosomes. So I'm going to use these two as an example uh, for the you can see one example over here where the gene is located on the autosome and in number two i'm mentioning to you that the gene is located on a sex chromosome so why is it such a big deal why do we have to care if it's on an autosome or sex chromosome the reason is because if it's located on the autosome they said that in question number one it's located on chromosome number one how many chromosomes number one does the male have the males have two chromosomes number one and each chromosome will have the allele represented by the red line. So the females, how many chromosome number one do they have? They also have two chromosomes number one. So they will also carry two alleles for that gene, the gene pink one. 
Now, for the second question over here, they said that the gene is located on the sex chromosomes. The males have only XY chromosomes, so in this case, the males will only carry one allele for that gene. But for the females, because they have two X chromosomes, they will carry two alleles for that gene. So what does that mean then? If I were to just split them up, okay, so you can see the male, the autosomes are at the top, the sex chromosomes are at the bottom, just separating them, same for the females as well. Now, let's say as an example, this is just my own example, for that gene, pink one, I'm going to put it as capital B allele and small b allele, okay? So the males and the females, they are genotypes because they can carry two alleles, right? because they have two autosomes like that. They can either be large b, large b, large b, small b, or small b, small b. That's what I meant when I said that the male and the female can carry two alleles, because the male and the female can either have a large b, large b, large b, small b, or small b, small b in their genotype. Those are their possible genotypes like that. If the gene is located on the autosomes, but if it's located on the sex chromosome, it's a bit different. So for my example, in number two, I'm going to represent it as the capital A allele and small a allele. This is just my example. Don't need to memorize it. Remember, the males can have XY chromosomes, so they can only carry one allele, and the allele is located on the X chromosome. So it's either X capital AY or X small AY. But for the females, however, because they have two X chromosomes, they can change it to, I'm just going to change the light green color to a dark green color so it's clearer to see. They can either have X capital A, X capital A, two alleles like that. X capital A, X small A, also two alleles. Or X small A, X small A, two alleles. So as you can see here, the males can only carry one allele when it's a sex-linked inheritance. But the females can carry two alleles in this example right here. But if it's located on the autosome, it does not matter at all whatsoever. So then some students will ask the question, if, okay, let's say they don't mention whether the gene is located on the X chromosome or if it's located on the autosome. How would I know then? Well, it's very simple. Because if the gene is located on the autosome, it affects the males and females equally. It doesn't matter. But if the gene is located on the sex chromosome, look at the male here. Okay, The males either have a 50% chance of getting the condition, if it's a recessive condition, and the females only have a 33% chance or a 1 in 3 chance of getting the condition if it's a recessive condition. So, sex-linked characteristics will not affect males and females equally. But if the genes are located on the autosomes, it will usually affect the male and females equally. That is another clue that can be given to you to tell you that that perhaps this is either autosomal inheritance or sex-linked inheritance. Let's look at this particular example. And I'm just mentioning to you that there is a gene that has two alleles, and this gene is affected. The two alleles are capital B allele and small b allele. Capital B will make the person have normal characteristics, but small b allele will cause the person to have a disease. This is just my example. Okay. Now, I did not specify whether this gene is located on the sex chromosomes, X chromosomes to be specific, or if it's located on the autosome. So we don't know. Sometimes the question will not imply it. Sometimes the question will not give it to you. But what they may show you is a family pedigree chart. So a family pedigree chart will represent squares as males, circles as females. This male had a child with this female. They had four offsprings, two males and two female offsprings. So in this situation over here, in the female offspring, the female offspring may have a child with another male. They had another child right there. And the male offspring here had another child with another female here. And they had another child right there. Now, if I shade certain parts like in black, as you can see shaded, if it's in black, I'm just going to imply that these people are affected by the disease. What I want you to notice is the, the female at the top there, in both cases, she has the disease. All right, But on the family tree on the left, if you notice, the disease is only passed on to the sons. But on the family tree on the right, or the pedigree chart on the right, it does not affect any of the kids at all. 
So right off the bat, I want you to see the pattern here. On the left, in the pedigree chart, you notice that only one female has the disease, but throughout the family, across the generations, three males are affected. So it affects more males than females. But on the right side, for some reason, it only affects the female, doesn't affect the next generation, and the disease only reappears in the future, in the third generation, where it affects one male. So the disease does not clearly affect one sex over the other sex. It affects both the male and females equally. Right? Now, I don't need you to memorize this pedigree chart. It's, not, it's useless to memorize it because it depends, a lot of genetics, like I said, depends on the situation. They will not give you this exact chart in the exam. So memorizing this chart is a waste of time. But what I want you to understand is the pattern of this. So the moment you notice that it affects more males than females in this situation here, it is probably a sex-linked inheritance. The clue that we have is the male parent at the top there is X capital B Y if it's a sex link inheritance and the females if the gene is located on the sex chromosome she will be X small b X small b. We know for the fact that the sons will always receive a Y chromosome from the male parent. That's always going to happen no matter what. So the male offspring will have no choice but to receive one X small b chromosome from the females. So in this case, automatically they will get the disease. If the disease is a sex link inheritance, if the mother has the condition, there is a 100% chance that the male child will also receive the condition as well. That is why it affects more males than females. Okay, But if it's autosomal, if the gene is located on the autosomes, remember the male and female will both carry two alleles. So in this case, Let's, for example, say the male is large B, large B, and the female is small B, small B. So each child will receive one small B allele from the female parent and one large B allele from the male parent. So they will not show the disease. So it does not affect. So in both cases, look at the left and look at the right. In both cases, both the female parents have the disease. But if the disease is on the X chromosome, it only affects their sons. But if the disease is on the autosome, it may not affect the kids or it may affect the kids equally. These are some of the clues that you'll have to piece out from the pedigree chart to come to a conclusion whether the gene is located on the autosome or if it's located on the sex chromosome.